Hey guys, this video is brought to you by AerospacePal.com. We deliver free content tailored specifically to the aerospace community. Come check out the site. In this video, we'll go over section 21 of DO160 emissions of radio frequency energy. And specifically, this video is aimed at conducted emissions. During this test, we're going to monitor the emissions from our interconnecting cable or cables of the EUT. This test is a short test ranging only one decade from 150 kilohertz to 152 MHz. The purpose of this test is to make sure that your unit is not emitting RF emissions that could interfere with other aircraft RF sensors. Now for section 21, the category is one letter for both conducted emissions and radiated emissions. Going from least stringent to most stringent, the categories are B, products that are not near RF antennas or other sensitive equipment. L, equipment that is far from apertures of the aircraft like windows and far from RF antennas, for example, the electronics bay. M, this is for equipment that may be near apertures of the aircraft but not in direct view of RF antennas, for example, the cabin or cockpit. H, has a direct view of the RF antennas, usually on the outside of the aircraft. Q. Equipment and associated wiring that may be near VHF or GPS radio receiver antennas or has little aircraft structure shielding. And finally, P. Equipment and associated wiring near HF, VHF, or GPS radio receiver antennas. All categories except P have different levels for measuring emissions on the power lines versus the interface bundle, so that's something to be aware of. L, M, and H are tested to the same exact level for CE, but they have different levels for RE. Now for this test, your equipment needs to be calibrated, but there's no specific calibration of the entire test setup. There are a few things that matter when setting up for conducted emissions. Number one, your current monitor needs to be less than five centimeters from your EUT connector. Number two, and this one's probably the most important, your bulkhead filtering should adequately filter out the noise from power sources and other simulated interfaces that are outside the chamber. More often than not, emissions failures or false failures come from your interfaces and not from your actual EUT because of poor filtering. Number three, your 10 microfarad cap should be the feed through style with chassis as its case and not the leaded kind. Number four, your lizen should be the 5 microhenry style, not the mill style which is 50 microhenries, and they should be properly current rated based on your EUT current draw. And last, number five, your local ground connections such as your power returns are not tested. The test equipment and knowledge for this test are somewhat sophisticated and involved, so unless you want to invest a great deal of time and or money, a testing house is the way to go here. Once your unit is in the first operating mode, the test engineer will scan across 150 kHz to 152 MHz. Rescan this range for all bundles as identified on your aircraft manufactured cable and in all operating modes of your EUT. Remember, however, that power lines are tested separate from interface bundles and shall be tested as an individual power line, according to 21.4a. Once each scan is complete, review your EUT emissions and ensure that you're below the limit for your category. And that's it. You've just tested one half of section 21, Conducted Emissions. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you found this informative, interesting, or just better than reading a 500 page standard, stop back at aerospacepal.com and tell other engineers about this free resource. Don't have a copy of D160? Check out the link below.